So ladies and gentlemen, I've been using the iPhone 16 Pro for over a month now. The long awaited Apple intelligence is finally here. The whole reason on why you wanna to upgrade to the iPhone 16 Pro. So I've been using the iPhone 16 Pro for about a month now or over a month now. And I've been on iOS 18.1 since the very beginning with Apple intelligence, which right now the time is recording, iOS 18.1 is available right now as we speak to the public. So if you go into system, general, and software update, you can update to iOS 18.1 right now to get Apple intelligence, which is only gonna support for the iPhone 15 Pro, 15 Pro Max, and of course, throughout the whole entire iPhone 16 lineup. And like I said, this is the iPhone 16 Pro in black titanium. And just to let you guys know, I'm not lying, this is the iPhone 16 Pro, that is it. And right away, I gotta say, coming from an iPhone 15 Pro Max, you guys would think going to the iPhone 16 Pro would be a bit of a downgrade considering that the larger phone is better, bigger battery life, bigger screen. But I would say not necessarily the case. So going to the 6.3 on the 16 Pro, yes, it is smaller, but I'm perfectly fine with the form factor of this. I'm perfectly fine with this phone right now, the screen size, because I could reach uh, all of the corners of the display. So we have the left, right. And of course we have the control center there, which by the way, this is my control center setup. I think this is the best control center setup here because I have all my toggles. So I have all my key toggles here, my Wi-Fi, my airdrop, my uh, sleep wake, and of course my orientation lock. Yeah, so it's just nice and clean. My bow plane up there, my lights here, I could control my lights and do not disturb flashlight. I think this is the best one. But of course, you can have all of your connectivities right here on the fly. But I, I just like this form factor a lot better than the Pro Max. But I am going to miss the larger display for when watching movies and just seeing like going on Instagram, TikTok, having that large canvas to see all your media. Now, you guys might not care about this. Now, you guys might not care about this. But recently, Google did send me out the Pixel 9 XL. Well, actually, a month ago since I got the iPhone. And just yesterday or last week, I just picked up the Google Pixel Fold and I love this phone so much. It's a phone. And now if I open it up, it's an iPad mini basically. So I love this a lot. And that's one thing I would love to see Apple make. I think at some point it is on its way. But until then, we got to pick between the iPhone 16 Pro or the 16 Pro Max. If you always been a Pro Max user, I think it might be time to step down to the Pro, the regular Pro, just because this is 6.3. If you're coming from an iPhone 11 Pro Max, that's a 6.4. So 6.4 to 6.3, you're not going to really see much of a big difference like there. But that just shows you on how much times are changing. But yeah, I much prefer the Pro over the Pro Max for this year. But for the 17, might be a different story. But yeah, as you guys can see, I have my activation screen here. I'm getting ready to sell this or maybe even give it away to you guys. If you guys want to see a giveaway, let me know down in the comments. I might do a giveaway, but I am done with the iPhone 15, just considering that I've been using the iPhone 16 Pro. But other than that, the material of the titanium, this is how it's looking. Just on a regular usage, the black, you could definitely see the smudges and the fingerprints and everything and surprisingly this year is a little bit more glossier than i intended so you may have to take out the microfiber cleaning cloth to polish it up a little bit but other than that you guys can see that capture control button is still in good tack and just taking a look at the back if you look at it very closely you might even see some um, indents of the magsafe um, actually you don't really see it too much but at some point, you're going to see some wear and tear around the MagSafe ring if you're using MagSafe accessories all the time. Perfect example, look at this on the 15. You guys can see like a little wear and tear by there, and that's not going to come off. That's just using MagSafe accessories all the time. And just all in all, I'm happy with the black color. The desert is okay, but it's so similar to the natural titanium that I, I just wanted a darker phone. And I don't regret one bit. So both the size and the color, I don't regret one bit. Now, one of the highlight features of the iPhone is the camera control button. So you guys can see you can evoke it by just pressing that camera control button. It is a button. Uh, so you had to press it down. That's going to wake it up. Press it again. That's going to actually open it right up. <laughs> open it right up. <laughs> 
And then if you want to take a picture, you can just click down and it's going to just snap the picture. But if you press on it very lightly, you could be able to invoke different options. So this was cool. I, you know, I think if you're taking a selfie, I could see where Apple is going with this. But it could be very finicky, um, especially if you're browsing through the menus and the tones. So it's not really ideal for portrait modes. If you're using a landscape, then it's a little bit better. But I could see this is not going to be for everybody. And I like how it has the the swipe gestures. Now, I do appreciate the little gestures that Apple put into it and even just the animations and just seeing everything refined. It's nice, but easily. I would rather Touch ID. I mean, Touch ID would have been very convenient to have on the side. Um, camera control is a gimmick. I much rather use the action button because it's a lot better because even when the phone is locked, as you guys can see, I can just press and hold it down and I'm already on the camera. So you guys could you you guys even see you guys even see the lock screen just now. Let me do that again. Boom. And now I'm ready to take a picture or I could take a video by pressing down on it and holding it, which, by the way, the um, if you hold down the capture button, you get in 30, uh, 4K at 30 frames per second, uh, which before it was only 1080p. And also, don't mind this. This isn't a crack. This is a screen protector. Um, I just want to show you guys how these screen protectors sometimes don't be lasting all the time. But I have an extra one. I'm going to install it later. But uh, the camera control button, if I do that, I can't press and hold it. It's not going to wake up the phone. I would have to press it one time and then press it again. And then I could be able to, oh, and then I could be able to do the quick capture if I need to. And also, I usually don't use cases for my phone. But if I do decide to use a case, I always rock out with a Pataka case and keep it moving. And I'm going to throw a link in the description to this. It just looks stylish and the texture, you could feel it. Oh, I don't know if you guys can see the textures going, but you could definitely feel every single texture here. And of course, you have that um, the camera control cut out open. And I know that was a big deal with case manufacturers don't know what to do, if they should cover this while having the camera control being functional or should it just have an entire cutout. And Pataka went out and just cut out the case so you could be able to use the camera control. <laughs> And then you have some cases where the camera control has a little indent so you can be able to smoothly, you know, uh, control your camera. But um, but usually I don't rock out with no cases. But usually on the day to day, I really don't use any cases like that. I like to rock my phone butt naked. And speaking of cases, I do want to give a quick shout out to Morph. This video is not sponsored, but they've been sending me a lot of cases. Shout out to Pataka. They sent me this case too. And shout out to Moment. So a bunch of cases I've been getting. And I'm going to throw a link in the description to everything. But like I said, I'm just a minimalist. For crying out loud, I even use the MagSafe wallet. I just put it right on the back of my phone. Grab my phone and I'm just keep it moving. So I'm just like a minimalist. So I really don't be caring about stuff like uh, having the most protection. Even though it's important. But you walking out that office, that meeting. You have a big giant case. You know what I mean? come out looking minimalistic but that's just me and also too something that you guys might not even notice right away the bezels has trunk so you do have smaller thinner bezels so to my left i have the iphone 15 pro max and to my right i have the 16 so it is thinner the bezels is a bit thinner but i don't think it's something that you're it's something that you might not even notice the difference is more prominent on the 16 pro max believe it or not but Thinner bezels this day and age, all the bezels are thin, so it's not going to matter too much. And I think this will be a perfect segue to talk about iOS 18.1. And by the way, my wallpaper pack is coming, Vortex, be on the lookout for that. And if it is out, I'll throw a link in the description with a pin on the comment section. But here's my iOS uh, 18 setup here. So I, I still have my custom icons. I am working on a what's on my iPhone video. All right, so now time for the Coupe de Gras, Apple Intelligence. Now, Apple Intelligence is the star of the show on pretty much across the website. We have new iMacs that came out with the M4 chip that supports Apple Intelligence. Even the iPad mini just recently got an update for Apple Intelligence. Apple Intelligence is gonna bring a plethora of things such as this brand new Siri UI. So if I press and hold the side button, you guys can see a glow across the frame of the phone. So all throughout the buzzle, that's when you know you invoke the new Siri. And speaking of that, you could be able to tap to Siri, but just by double pressing the bottom by your touch bar, 
uh, not your touch bar, <laughs> by your home bar. And you can be able to uh, type to Siri. So what's the weather? So without actually talking to Siri in public, for example, you could be able to talk to Siri right then and there. And also too, Siri sounds more natural and you could talk to Siri naturally. Even if you stumble across the word, it's going to be able to understand you. What's the time in Paris? Oh, I mean Barcelona. And it's going to be able to give you everything just like that. So that is pretty amazing. So it's not too strict on how you have to pronounce on certain things. And still even listening now. What's the weather? Oh. What's the weather in Barcelona? What's the air quality like over there? And you guys can see. You can be able to continue the conversation. How long will it take for me to go there? And yeah, there you guys have it. So 3,815 3, miles. So Siri is just smarter overall. That's going to help save time. If you want to do some requests, it's going to make things a little bit more easier. Now, also, you can ask Siri on how to use your device, such as how to set a reminder. How to take a screenshot. How to send a mail. And you see how fast it's doing everything? Well, it's giving you like a real mail, but it's so fast and nifty. Like it, it's so much better. Now, usually for the mail, now mail also received the overhaul too. Now, usually I use a third party client such as Spark, but now I'm starting to use the official Apple mail just thanks to Apple intelligence. So it could prioritize making the most important mail on the top while the other ones are going to be on the bottom. And it came in clutch during my day in the life. That video is coming out soon. So mail priority is definitely going to be something that I'm going to use all the time, especially as an influencer. We're getting constant important emails. So that's going to come in handy. And also too, it's going to get even better with iOS 18.2, which is going to set to release uh, maybe in December. It's currently still in beta. And also too, I have reduced interruptions. So this is going to also prioritize the most important notifications, such as maybe let, let's say my mom calls me or my grandma calls me. I could be able to see that notification comes in. So it's not going to just be all like the those Instagram group chats where they just send reels all day and post. It's probably not going to come up. It's just going to prioritize the most important uh, notifications, which I like. Uh, I've been using this a lot and it's pretty accurate too, surprisingly. Surprisingly, it's pretty accurate because everything is on device learning. So that's pretty good. Now, another overhaul is the photos. Let's say I want to... Um, take out some things out the background here. Um, I could be able to tap on cleanup and let's say I want to hide this little plant on the top here. So I could be able to just color that in or circle it and it's going to be able to hide that in the background. So boom, voila. It's not perfect, but it did a decent job. You could scribble that out, take out the plant, maybe take out the little pipes here. The pipes, that's going to be easy. And it's going to just remove it. So that's pretty dope. And another nifty feature, and I actually never used this before, uh, you can actually create a memory movie. So you could describe a memory. So let's say uh, time in Arizona. So I was just recently in Arizona and everything here, thanks to Apple Intelligence, is going to generate all the moments of Arizona. And it's going to pinpoint Scotchdale, desert, food, all this stuff. So you guys see this, this animation? It's actually pretty insane. And it's going to just make a movie. So, and it even has the music too. But this might be copyright. So let me just, and you could be able to skim through all the photos. I don't know what it's going to show. Okay, so shout out to my boy Kevin Breeze for taking that picture. So it just pinpoints all the moments of uh, me in Arizona. which I had an incredible time. That day in the life is going to be based in Arizona. Anything that you can think of, you could be able to generate a memory movie. Let's say for a wedding, you could create a movie, even give suggestions here too. So it uh, mitigates anything from your contacts. So Thomas, shout out to Tommy Lee Beats, in and out in Limbrook and Colorful Horizons. So create your own memories. And at any point, you could be able to relive those memories that you created. 
or that Apple intelligence created already for you. Now iMessage also has some Apple intelligence integration too. So you could be able to summarize messages and you have smart replies. And even on the phone application, you can be able to record phone calls. You can now record phone calls just by tapping on the top left. So you guys see the little memo here and it's going to come up with a prompt and it's going to say this call is being recorded. Now there's a prompt that says this call is being recorded and it's automatically going to save within your notes. So this is pretty handy. I just have it on mute. So I could be talking right now and it's recording the phone call. And anytime you want to play it back, it's going to save right then where I didn't, <laughs> it's going to save within your Apple notes and you could be able to play it back. So I was just talking to myself here and so I could be talking right now. Unfortunately, the system the cannot phone. process your entries. So Please really try again later. Goodbye. Yeah. So yeah, th I think this is going to be very handy. And with Apple intelligence, you can be able to get this. So the transcript with the phone call, this is thanks to Apple intelligence right here. So but all devices such as an iPhone 14, iPhone 13 that supports iOS 18.1, you could be able to record the phone calls, but you're not going to be able to get the transcript here. And another Apple intelligence feature, you could summarize the phone calls too. And <laughs> it ain't really much, but the summarize instead of like, let's say you're on the phone for like two hours or something, you could have Apple intelligence summarize your phone calls using that transcript. So this is going to be very handy. But I think my favorite feature of them all is the fact how you can utilize writing tools throughout the entire iOS. So here, for example, I'm on my notes. You could be able to select a text and you have a prompt on the here. So where you'd be able to copy and paste, you have writing tools that is new, or you could tap the Apple intelligence button on the keyboard right there. And now you have your writing tools. So you can have uh, Apple intelligence proofread it, rewrite it make the tone sound more friendly, professional, or even concise the entire message here. So in this case, we can have it sound more friendly and it's going to use that Apple intelligence. Look at that, that UI there. And it's going to be able to sound, make it sound more friendlier. So just a heads up this video in description, uh, have some affiliate links and yeah, I might even actually use that. So I'm going to tap on done and there you go really powerful stuff here on the writing tools and i think this is going to be handy for anything that you do uh, whether you're on messages sending a mail this is going to be the coup de gras of apple intelligence and i can only imagine how it's going to be on my macbook yeah so this is this is the reason why i like apple intelligence right here this is important so no more grammarly subscriptions everything is built right into the os um, if you have Apple intelligence and that is just some of my favorite Apple intelligence features. There's so many little features to go over, but if you go into the settings and you could go into iOS 18.2, you have even more Apple intelligence, such as the Gemojis where you could create your own emojis. You have the image playground, so you could be able to create your own images using AI. Then you have the chat GPT integration with Siri, making Siri even smarter than what it is. It's so much going on with Apple intelligence. This is just the tip of the iceberg and it's already enough where it might be worth upgrading. If you have an iPhone 13, utilize some of those Apple intelligence greatness. And like I said, it's much more of an upgrade. If you're coming from an iPhone 13, which I recommend you get in that titanium frame. You also get a USB type C and you get in that dynamic Island thinner bezels faster processor, better cameras. It's just a solid upgrade all around. If you're coming from an iPhone 15, especially the 15 Pro, you could really sit this one out. You really don't need to upgrade to the iPhone 16, but if it wasn't for my YouTube career, I would have probably kept my iPhone 15 Pro Max without a doubt. But yeah, guys, that is where I'm gonna end up. Oh, shit. <laughs> And yeah, guys, I think this is where I'm going to end out the video. If you have any questions or concerns, let me know down in the comments down below. If you guys want to see an iPhone giveaway, make sure you guys subscribe to the channel. Follow my social medias at Simply Pops. That's on X. That's on Instagram. And comment down below what you guys think about Apple intelligence. Did you update or do you just don't even care about Apple intelligence at all? Let me know in the comments. And other than that, I hope you all have a simple day and stay tuned for more videos.